Ich bin ein bisschen verletzt. Ich bin ein Hi everybody, thanks for coming here today. Um, it feels good just to see your faces for those of you whose faces I can see. And um, let's jump right into class. So this class is um, beginning and intermediate. It's hosted by Hatuch Chichish and KTOO. A little bit about the class. I'm your teacher. My name is Mila Toga. I'm Koyukon Athabaskan and Iak, but I'm a student of the Thinget language. Um, I'll, I'll share more about myself, um, but as far as the class information goes, we'll meet every Friday mornings, um, 10 to 11 a.m. The dates are today through December 16th with the possibility of continuing in January. And um, yeah, I look forward to spending time with you folks. We'll be here on Zoom every Friday. And this will be a class that's catered to language practice for beginning and intermediate students. So. Um, we had a discussion before this class began, and I understand folks will be coming from different levels of um, experience, and so I'll meet you where you're at. So on the menu for today, um, I'll share a little bit about myself. I'll share a little bit about my expectations for class to help you maximize what you gain out of this experience in our time together. Um, I'll share some on -learn re learning resources, language learning. Um, they're available to you. If you're not able to purchase them, they're online and they're free. So we'll, we'll go over those. We'll open it up for questions you might have for me. And then if we have time, I'd like to kind of hear from you, have a little bit of discussion about what are your interests for the class in terms of your language learning. And so kind of just getting to know you and helping you set your goals. So I'll share my, my Thinget introduction with you. Nila Toga Aya Achsai Konanachsiti Owe Ohan. Uh, so my name is Nila Toga. In English, my name is Anna Clark. Um, our family is Kwekan, Athabaskan, and Iak. Um, today we're here on beautiful land. We're on the land of the Aluktik, also known as the Sugpak people. Its uh, native name is um, Katuchik. It's also known as Seward. And so I'm at my parents' house today because my mom's birthday will be on Sunday. So my brother and I drove down. And sharing a little bit about class expectations. So we'll have a chance to hear from you as well. Um, so far, it looks like a pretty small group size. So, um, but for now, I'll just go over the expectations for class. And one of the things I think would be great is if you have a way of taking notes. So um, whether you use a paper notebook and a pen, um, having that available for you, a notebook that is just for Thinget language learning, um, because you might wanna be able to go back on your notes for some of our work that we'll do together. And so be kind to yourself, um, find a notebook that's just for Thinget, or if you prefer to keep notes on an electronic file, 
um, that's also an option, but um, you can just have it available someplace that's easy for you to find. We will be reading and writing in this class. So um, I'll help you, you know, become familiar with the Dauenhauer orthography, how we read and write in Singet. And then as far as housekeeping for Zoom goes, um, I would make a request that you keep your camera on if possible. I know that folks, you know, kind of, we all navigated our isolation periods differently. We're all ad adjusting to working from home. And so I totally understand that not everybody's camera can be on all the time. However, if it is a possibility for you, it just helps me see your face, get to know you. Um, it helps me see you, you're participating. And um, yeah, when you participate, this shows me how much progress I'm making with you. So that's just a request. It's not a requirement um, that I'd be able to see you and talk with you in class. Um, I'll share an outline for our classes for November so that looking forward, you'll be able to see what we're gonna study looking ahead so you can prepare. So that's something you can expect from me. Um, we'll, as we advance as a group, um, one of my goals for this class is that we can recognize each other and greet each other using our native names. And so um, if, if you're Yupik or Shinged or Athabaskan like me, you can keep your identity. Or if you don't have a native name, um, I can work with you on making a nickname for class. So for example, when I started learning Shinged, I didn't have a native name. And so I think they called me Gunanashawu in class. That just means Athabascan woman. But it's just um, a way so that if you have a, a nickname or a pet name for class, that we can continue to use the Thinget sounds when we address each other so that you're not having to make that transition back and forth. Um, classes will be recorded. And if you do miss a class, um, that's totally fine. If you just wanna send me a message to let me know, and then if um, let me know if you were able to watch the recording to kind of catch up. And that just kind of gives me an idea of where you're at. Yeah, so um, this is kind of a brunch club. It's 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's when I usually do my most eating is in the morning. I'm hydrating and eating, drinking tea. I encourage you to do the same. And um, you're more than welcome to bring snacks, tea, eat during class. Uh, my only recommendation is don't eat while you're speaking so that um, you don't hurt anybody, you don't choke. There's a lot of sounds in Singet where you'll be um, using, you know, this part of your instrument down in your throat and there's pinched sound. So that's always kind of a, um, a joke we make is don't eat while you're speaking Singet. And uh, only takes once <laughs> to learn. I have a couple more um, expectations I wanna share, but before I go on lecturing you for 45 minutes, does anybody have any questions for me so far? And if you do, you can just unmute your mic, or if you want, you can use the raise hand function. That will put you at the top of my screen so I can see everybody, see you. Um, will you speak your indigenous name a time or two so we can take that in? Uh -huh. um, let me go to where it's written so you can see. Um, so I wrote my name here. Um, N-E-E-L-A-A-T-U-G-H-A-A. -A -A. It's a long one. And since it's a Koyakon name, um, some of the sounds are different from Singet, but you can just repeat after me. 
Um, well, I'll do the last syllable first. This GH in my grandma's first language is a ra. Ah. Uh huh. Ra. Ta. Mm hmm. So my whole name is Nila Tora. Nila Tora. Uh huh. Nila Tora. Nila Tora. Uh huh. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Any other questions from folks? Okay. Um Maybe I'll just share that Hatush Lachish is hosting a two day gathering next week. So it's the one week I know we have a conflict. And so some of our staff and partners um, might miss next Friday. Um, so just throwing that out there. But I think the rest of the Fridays don't have anything that conflicts. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. So will there still be some students that will be here? Yes, we just um, from KTO, we just have a handful of their staff joining us at the gathering. Um, mm -hmm. So I think most participants that I see here will be here, uh, but a few will be missing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. All right. So <clears throat> a couple more expectations. Um, if at some point during the next two months, you feel like oh, I'm struggling with this and you're kind of like, I, I don't think I'm gonna go anymore. Um, it's, you know, it's an open door. You're welcome to come when you're available. But if you're feeling like you can't do it and that's inhibiting you, um, shoot me an email because um, I can help you. And so I would just encourage you to feel comfortable reaching out to me. Um, if there's something you're struggling with, because I'll meet you where you're at. So we'll kind of fluctuate our expectations for class, depending on your goals, where you're at. And so some parts of class, I might be more, you know, just we're shaking off the dust. We're starting out. We're back at beginning. And then as we go through, I might kind of push you a little bit, but um, that'll just sort of be so I can gauge where you're at. So don't be discouraged. Shoot me a message if you're feeling like you're struggling. Um, one thing you can expect from me is that I won't call on you individually to perform. So for example, I might say everybody repeat after me, but I won't like single you out and say recite this dialogue. <laughs> so you, you can rest assured I'm not gonna put you on the spot. And then um, back to the notes again, like I said before, just keep your notes nice, keep them in one place so that you can, you can rely on them for yourself. Probably we'll have assignments where we're gonna work together on things and we'll try to pick different partners each time. Any questions before I share some of the online resources? So some of the online resources we'll use, um, actually all of them are available on clinkitlanguage.com and I've linked it at the top. And um, I'll put all these links, I'll share all these links with you so you can just access them. But um, I'll just kind of walk you through without going too far in depth, just to give you familiarity if you don't already have it. So this is um, Rene's blog. It's, it's at clinkitlanguage.com. And he has a lot of resources on here. The ones we're gonna look at are, the first one is the dictionary. If you're like me, 
you're often looking up words from your computer. And that's why I like to use this version, this HTML version, because it's searchable on your computer. So I'll open up the dictionary, select the HTML version. And then I tend to look up things from the Thinget side, Thinget to English. So I click Thinget. And if you're on an Apple computer like I am, um, you can open up a search function by holding down command and pushing F. If you're on a PC, it'll be control F. And so you can see here, it opens up the search function. And this is really helpful when you need to look up a word. Um, you can do, you can type in English words or Thinget words, but if I wanna know, how do you say flower? I'll type it in. I can see there's 21 occurrences of the word English word flower. And so I'll hit enter and kind of scroll through them just to, I call it like my research phase when I'm looking up a word. Um, I'll kind of just look at all the entries that are associated with it before I start to narrow down. What am I trying to say? So That's kind of a fun thing. If you're a dictionary person like me, it's just kind of fun to see. Um, this dictionary is cool because it will also share um, details about the phrase, how it breaks down and things like that. But um, next resource that we'll be using is the beginning thing at workbook. Um, this is a link to an online drive um, that Rene keeps. And this is a good resource. So there's a lot of good gems in here. There's inspiring quotes. There's a translation. He always includes the speaker. You can see their Thinget name, their English name. This is what you could call a gloss. And so when for folks who are in that intermediate level where you're rearranging words to put them in a sentence to express yourself, this becomes really useful. So I would encourage you, even if you're brand new, um, just kind of approach it with curiosity. Don't let it scare you away. I know it looks like a lot, but um, over time, you'll start to build familiarity. These are some of the chapters. This book was based off the beginning Thinget book um, com compiled by um, Keochne and Kwainak, Nora Marks Downhauer and Richard Downhauer. So yeah, this is a fun book that we'll we'll be using this over the over the course. This next one is an online verb database, again for folks of all levels. Um, the way I approach these resources is like I'll use all of them. I've used them all since I was a very beginner. But the way I engage with them um, deepened over time. And so if you're a very beginner and you're looking at this verb database, um, what I would share with you is that all these entries are verb roots. And that's as much as you need to know just to start out with. For people that are um, in the phase of writing sentences, keeping journals, depending on where you're at, you can expand a root by clicking on it. And then if you click the yellow highlighted portion, 
you can scroll down and see the different forms and modes of the verb. So this verb root ok, um, for the English meaning to build a fire, I can say build a fire, I can say don't build a fire, I can say I built a fire. And so this is really useful for me, especially when I was starting out to be able to express myself just by copying and pasting a word, learning how to pronounce it and making it part of my vocabulary. So, That is the online verb database. This was compiled by um, Carrie Eggleston. Any questions so far? Okay, feel free to stop me if you have questions. Um, <laughs> this next. This next one is really fun. <clears throat> it's called Tlingit Kainachsa. And that just means say it in Tlingit. It's a phrase book. I'll share it with you. I like this phrase book. Um, my very first teacher was Kakwask Ishmael Hope. And I think in our first semester, maybe a few weeks in, he gave us an assignment that was like a show and tell. And I'll have to find it. I think I'll share it with you when I find it. Um, it's kind of fun for me to watch because I was a very beginner. And he, the assignment he said was, okay, pick an item find four sentences to say, to describe it or talk about it. And he said, you can use your notes, but do the best you can to memorize it. And then you're gonna do show and tell in class. And this was in 2017. And so all our classes were in person and it was just fun for me. But the one I, the one I gave was about a can of salmon. And so, I looked through this phrase book and I'm gonna zoom in cause it's kind of small. But it has a lot of fun topics. Um, I always, yeah, where's food? There's dating and schmoozing. You can see what month it is. Oh, here, cooking, eating and talking about food. So I think I picked four sentences and I practiced them on my phone and then recited it in class. It was just fun because, you know, it was such a supportive environment and everybody clapped, you know, it was just like my first public speaking <laughs> event in Shinga was, was kind of fun. But this is a good resource for that. And, and I recommend it for beginning learners to when you're in the memorization phase to um, just memorize a couple phrases and practice, try them out on, on people. And then um, this last one is a YouTube video with word examples and Khune um, put this together. And uh, I really like it, especially for vowels. We'll, we'll do this in class in a couple days, but it's just an introduction to think it sounds with words. And so it's just, he makes space for you to repeat after him when he's making the sounds. And um, I'll, I'll share the link for this in class, in the chat, I mean. There you go, I just put it in the chat. Any questions about those resources? Are folks pretty familiar with them? Have you seen them before? Let's 
Influencer. Aha. Seeing some head nods. Okay. So, um, let's practice. So this is um, <laughs> the letter L in Tlingit will mostly be what we call a voiceless L. And so everybody, you can unmute your mic if you want, because this is a, a smaller group. But everybody just repeat after me, L. That's a voiced L like you hear in, in English. And so um, this time say it and pay attention to where your teeth or where your tongue goes in the back of your teeth. L. 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 Yeah. So this time we're going to do a voiceless L like you'll hear in Tlingit. So you put your tongue in that same spot and then instead of activating your voice box, you're just going to breathe it out. So repeat after me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. And so when it's not pinched, it's just an L, you just kind of breathe it out. And so um, everybody say, Gunashish. Gunashish. Okay. Again. Gunashish. Gunashish. Okay. Gunashish means thank you. And I heard your high tone. And um, I deliberately over enunciate my high tones. Um, especially when I was starting out, so that you internalize it that way. And um, yeah, you'll see the high tone. When I say high tone, when you look at the E, the double E, it has a, a mark above it that indicates a high tone. So in Tlingit, um, it's a tonal language. And so when you inflect your voice, it gives meaning to the word. So um, it's important to remember that to learn the tones and to pronounce them. And so I liked hearing you say Gwenachish. It's handy for me now when I'm taking notes from elders or I'm working on transcription. Um, some of the words I hear, I, I recognize the tones and I write it with the tone. I remember which ones are high tone and low tone. Sometimes I don't. And I enjoy when my classmates correct me and if they're familiar, to me, that's like a good sign. Um, so yeah, second word we'll practice is Tlingit. So repeat after me, Tlingit. 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 Okay. So I want to hear from you guys. Um, what are some of your interests? Um, if you want to share who you are, where you're from, um, no pressure. If you want to share your introduction and sing it, if you know it, that's fine. If not, that's also fine. But what are some of your goals and interests for this class? I can go. Um, my name's Chloe. I'm the new morning edition host for KTOO. I'd say some of my goals and interests for this class are just being able to, at the very minimum, properly be able to pronounce place names and names of uh, Lincoln individuals in the community. So I'm super stoked to be here. And I loved the resources you shared. Those were awesome. Awesome. You okay, gonna teach. Kunyana Gudi Duasak. My Slinket name is Kunyana uh, Gudi. 
and I have been learning in this space uh, for uh, some time, um, but I'm realizing that one hour a week is not, I, I've struggled to make progress. So in the back, you can see some of my beautiful family. My, my son is a um, language learner, and so I'm learning from him. Um, and I'm excited by the way that you have framed this class because um, I need to level up. I, um, I just haven't, I've been swimming in the space so the sounds are becoming more familiar, but I, I've not, I don't fully understand at all like the structure. And um, so my goals are around um, really deepening some learning and continuing on this language path. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing with us. We can share. Yeah. Uh, Alicia, you could do a song. I have also been learning in this space um, for the last couple of years, but I hear Hune say frequently that if you want to learn this language, you have to change your life. <laughs> so um, trying to commit to more than one hour a week and uh, learn how to conjugate verbs. Because um, I can copy and paste and memorize but beyond that, constructing sentences is very challenging. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks for sharing both of you. It's helpful for me to hear too, what you've been working on and where you wanna go from there. So it'll help me um, support your language learning. So, okay. I'll share, I'm uh -huh. Jennifer. Pemberton um, from KTOO and I've been telling, when I tell people that I've been learning Schlinget and then they say, say something, uh, I started saying, I'm learning about Schlinget <laughs> um, because it feels more like just getting to understand the language and I, um, and also being familiar with the sounds. And I, I think I echo what a lot of people are saying of, you know, when you do this, um, you know, once a week for an hour, you know, fluency is may is not my goal at this point um i think being comfortable with the language and being able to properly pronounce things especially you know we working in public media and and being the sort of in some ways the mouthpiece for the community it's really important to recognize the land that we're on and the language that you know that belongs to this place so it's you know partly out of out of respect, um, but also like that will only get you so far. And you can say you respect the language all you want until you actually start using it. So um, my goals are to sort of, like a lot of people said, sort of move it forward, but continue to hold on to that idea of like where, you know, where that feeling comes from and where the motivation comes from is to just really be respectful um, of the space and the language, how the language interacts with the land that we're on. I'll go next. This is Cheryl. Yeah. Um so uh Sukwatka Ayahat is my um Indian name and I was named by my grandmother Satkwe of the Takwane D and Great Kahina Cheryl Demert Fairbanks. I'm Klinkit Simpsian and Klinkit Cha'ak Kuhisitan and Lakshibu on Simpsian, which is the house of the wolf. Takwanedi Yadiya Hatsati. And Hinya Kwan Dachaya Hat. I'm from the Hinya uh, Kwan area. And Ketchikan Hachi Hat Kubaditsi, that's where I was born. And Cedar Crest Hachi Hatya Ti, I live on the lands of the 
Sandia Pueblo and the Tamaya Pueblo. Oh. And um, yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I had my time zones mixed up. So I logged in at eight o'clock. Oh. <laughs> I go, oh my God. And so I was so thrilled that I had a few hours to spare. But um, what I'd like to learn is, um, I, I would like to learn a prayer Mm-hmm. And I am also a peacemaker, and I'm working on my peacemaker curriculum. And I've begun, I've begun to interweave Klinget and uh, peacemaking concepts. And I find that when I am working in Klinget, it gives me more depth to what I'm trying to get across. So I'm going to switch. Okay. Oh, and I wanted to say my sister cousin Cindy Sue is on. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gonna change. Sashi Gao, I saw your hand is up too. Uh, yeah. Uh, ah, Sashi Gao, do have you had to a sack? And uh, I kind of follow along with everybody else. Uh, I've been kind of trying to do this for a while. And it's really hard when, like, well, right now I'm currently speaking to my cats in Clinket, but they don't speak back. So, um, <clears throat> uh, and so the same thing um, in trying to immerse myself. Uh, in addition to this class, there's the uh, lunchtime learning class on, I believe, Tuesday and Thursday. So I'm in that. And there's now a uh, new um, new section of beginning Clinket at the university, so uh, you can sign up for free on there. Mm-hmm. And um, essentially, you know, if if there's a class available, I'm trying to take it. That way, I could continue to speak. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is. Uh, proper pronunciation because then I think that's going to help me uh, remember better Mm -hmm. because right now my problem is just because I remember something today doesn't mean I'm going to remember it five minutes from now okay yep that's good to know okay gonna teach Boston you have a question or you want to share yeah, I just wanted to say, um, kind of cheese for this class. It's been so fantastic, and the times we've been learning before. What's been? Uh, I just discovered this the other day. I was looking at Ida's bio on the UAS website, and it's all in Clinket. And I was like, able to recognize some of the words and being able to put together some of the sounds. And so, to me, the the um, the recognition over time of being able to look at a word and not and not have it or, or look at a sentence and not have it be so scary has been really nice to sort of um, kind of begin to recognize that. I may not know what it all means, but I may be able to say it um, rudimentary, rudimentarily. Well, I can't even say that word, <laughs> but the but the. Um, but that idea, so I guess the, the getting, uh, conjugating verbs is still scary, of course, and figuring out how that all works and the, the structure of how a sentence is put together. Mm-hmm. Um, I think continuing on that journey is, is, is really valuable, but also, I guess, just finding ways to recognize mm-hmm. um, how the how the alphabet or how the letters are put together and and being able to see that in 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 a way that allows you to to maybe say the word um i've been really appreciative of that i'm hoping to to find more of that i think that would be that and i also don't have um i i think having uh, a class name will be really fun because i don't have a clinket name or a learning name and um, maybe trying to create my own introduction would be would be fantastic as well okay 
I don't know what the clinket word is for dum dum, but maybe that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> When you when you say um, you want to be able to recognize letters, are you talking about associating the written alphabet with the sounds? Yes, a little bit. Yes, yes, okay. I think so. Being able to see that and 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 it's been interesting to be able to look at a word and 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 know what that what which of what of that word is the alphabet and knowing what that sound is. That's a really uh, great recognition. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Jeez. thank you, Gunnar Cheesh. Uh, Cindy Gamble. Ms. Cheesh, Clean Ta, you had to a sock, Clink it, hey, nah, Cindy Gamble, you had to a sock, Glit Kanach, and that is as much as I can remember my introduction. Okay. I'm so glad my uh, sister cousin Sherry went first. I'm also of the Kahusatan. Um, I think that uh, you can see by my white hair that I'm an elder and part of uh, the consequences of boarding school for my family was that uh, although um, our fathers were the clinket first speakers, you know, they did not teach us the language that was part of um, they, they, because of what they suffered through, they did not feel that was good for us. So here I am as an elder learning our language, but I'm also a grandmother. And um, so I'm, I just want to learn conversational clinket, mm -hmm. how to, how to just, I mean, I, I know I can say some of these words, you know, pass the bread and where are you going? And, um, you know, but I, I need this nudge. I love having these classes need the nudge. I'm glad you're going to make us accountable and conversational um, and, and holding conversations because I think that's a big missing link for me mm -hmm. is uh, I need that nudge <laughs> mm -hmm. to, to do that and the other thing is um, I spent half my life I was born in Cloak and spent half my life on Prince Wells Island and um, one of my very first teachers was Claire Pradovich and I know for the elders and um in our on our in our area that our southern dialect was very important mm -hmm. and so um any time that we can I, I can learn some of those words to keep on our dialect going to would be would be important and I, d I don't know you know a lot of our southern dialect speakers are no longer with us and so mm -hmm. um but if we can I, i'd like to honor that their mm -hmm. their wish about our dialect Goodness, cheese. Okay, goodness, cheese. Oh, I'm I'm in Olympia, Washington, right now too. Oh wow. Okay, goodness, cheese. Happy goody. Thanks for coming here. Joel Boz. Uh, goodness, cheese. Mm -hmm. My name's Joel Boz. Um, I'm a very beginner. I don't know much about the language. Mm -hmm. I'm also an educator with Discovery Southeast. Mm -hmm. mainly at Saik uh, Gastineau Elementary. Okay. I get the uh, benefit of taking kids outside and we do lots of lessons and uh, Discovery Southeast has, you know, shown me this class. And so I'm, I'm new to this, but happy to be here. Mm. Um, some of my interests include plants. I'm a big uh, gardener. Okay. And then so I educate kids on gardens. And um, so I really would like to know the names of plants in Clinkit so that I can uh, teach the kids the right way. That's kind of one of my big interests here. And also just learning more about um, how to kind of understand that, you know, I'm a guest here on this land and how to, how to you know, educate the children and learn from both them and just kind of know this place more and understand how to kind of get that message across to the kids. Mm, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, that reminds me of my time in Southeast because my family is from the interior and the Prince Lame Sound. So I went through a very similar process being on Tlingit land and learning to express how do I, you know, Talk, how do I relate to people of the land and how do I introduce myself? So, okay, Gwyneth Cheese. 
Yokok. Oh, I see you're unmuted, but I can't hear your voice for some reason. No, I can't hear you. Hmm. Do you have a Bluetooth device connected or anything like that? Oh, okay. She just shared in the chat. I am Lorena Gray from Barrow, Alaska. I work as a cultural specialist at Akbe Elementary. Okay, Gunachish, thanks for sharing. Do you have any interests for language learning you want to type in the chat? Awesome. Okay, very beginner. Okay, good. That's good for me to know. Gunachish. Right. Who else? Uh, I can go next. I'm Adeline Baxter. I get KTOO. And I did live in Juneau for three years, but now I live in Anchorage, and I know Athena. And um, I always wanted to um, learn um, some Thinkit, and especially when I was an education reporter and was covering a lot of the exciting work that was happening there. Mm -hmm. um, and then right as I left KTLO, they started language classes. So I'm happy to be back now at the very beginning and way behind all my colleagues. Um, so <laughs> very beginner and um, uh, gonna teach for this opportunity and I'm very much looking forward to it. Mm, okay, awesome. It's, sometimes it's good to be behind because they push you. <laughs> Who else? I can go next. Kauziao Kla Aya Ak Sai Blake Aina Christy Provost Yehat Duasak Ishkatan Nahasiti Peace Server Alberta Canada Yehat Yeti. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I was given the name Kauziao Klau by my great grandmother. She was uh, one of the few fluent speakers in Karkaros, Yukon. I'm from the Ishkatan clan there. Um, I live in uh, Alberta, Canada now, though. Um, and yeah, not having my great grandma around anymore, I just really uh, yearn to hear more Linget. Uh, learn as much as I can. Um, she was helping me teach my girls a bit. And so I just want to fill that role a bit and, and try and uh, pass link ed on and just learn more that I can use um, just throughout my life on a day to day basis, just to, so it can be heard and, and seen and spoken within my family and within our clan. Um, I would love to learn just a few um, prayers or greetings for clan events, um, just because my great grandma is no longer here. So just we need, you know, more people in our clan to fill that role a bit. Uh, Gunashish. Mm, okay. Gunashish for sharing and for stepping up into that role. I recognize you too from our lunchtime classes. So Gunashish. Who else? Um, I can go. Mm -hmm. um, I think you had to yourself. Um, I I think similarly to a lot of people here, have been trying to learn 
um, think it for a bit, um, but I've only ever been able to learn online because I'm currently at school on the East Coast. Mm. Um, and so I think I just want to um, improve my speaking skills in general and also have a bit of an online community to learn with. So I'm grateful for this one. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. I got it working. Oh, Sorry. Good. good. Um, um, so my name's Lorena, but my Anupak name is Ayopok. Um, so Utkavik mi Gorunga means I'm from Barrow, but they now call it its traditional name Utkavik. Um, and I speak some of my um, ancestral language of Anupak. And, um, but I've been living on Clinket Ani for 15 years, and I am now working in the school as a cultural um, specialist. And so um, my children, I have four sons, three of them know more Clinket than I do. Um, so they're teaching me as I'm in this new job. And so I, I'm looking forward to learning the language so I can incorporate it into my um, classroom setting. Mm, okay. And what grades do you teach? Um, K through five. Okay. Okay. Let's see, um, I'm gonna stop there since we're coming up on time. I wanna re be respectful of your next commitments, but just kind of reflecting back, I can relate you know, to your different points in your language learning journey. When each of you shared, it kind of brought me to a point in my language learning, even when it's you know, real time like today, I still, I still work on these things, so. Over the next two months, I'm gonna kind of share with you some of my tools that I've used to help me memorize, to help me participate in immersion, to learn people's names, you know, and it's, it's cool to hear you talk about your desire to be, you know, to uplift place-based learning and to, you know, honor your relationship to the land you're on and the people whose land you're on, so. I think this will be a good class and we'll continue this conversation. I'm going to put my email in the chat so that you can um, write to me and let's do that really quick. I have a question. Uh -huh. um, could we get, since I wasn't a, a natural learner, um, I really rely on written word could we get a list of our classmates and their their names so we can start getting used to that and practicing yeah okay so next friday when we come in we'll change our names on our screens to our native names if we have them um i'll work with in next class or then one after that i'll work with folks on getting your class name or your nickname if you don't have a native name and i'll, I'll keep a list too so good enough cheese for bringing that up and let's see um are there any more questions before we talk about homework all right so Homework for this week is going to be low key since we just met and um, we're getting going. So your homework for this week is take a look at those online online learning resources I shared. Um, me, yeah, go ahead and just go to clinkitlanguage.com under the resources tab and just check them out. 
think I can put these in the chat. Let me see if this works. Okay. The only link I've pasted in the chat is clinkitlanguage.com, but check out the resources that I posted in the chat. Get familiar with them. Um, you don't need to dive super deep, but just click around, check them out. And then set up a notebook or an electronic document just for taking notes and can get. And then when you get time, jot down a note about your interests in language learning for this class, especially if you didn't get a chance to share today. Because as we continue this discussion, um, it'll kind of help us help me plan out the rest of the class. Okay, any questions before we leave? Oh, okay, I see in the chat, is there a link to the beginning thing get workbook? Let me, yeah, let me just paste it now since I have it open. Okay, just put that link in the chat. And if there's no more questions, have a good rest of your day, have a good weekend, have a spooky Halloween, and I'll see you next week on Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Anna, is there a word for Halloween in Clinket? Oh, gee. Let me look. <laughs> That's a good one. Let me see. No, I only see yesha, which is can be used. I'll I'll paste it in the chat. It could be used for like a Halloween mask. Okay. Well, I I think yeah, it's actually like All Hallows Eve. Um, so maybe if you did like Eve and or Ghost Eve. Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, the day before Day of the Dead. I'll have to look into that. That could be a fun thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that does sound fun. It'll be a day late, but that's my usual. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Finish cheese, see you, Quasitine. Cheese. Let me stop the recording here. How do you do that? Oh, here we go.